Yeah, as uh, just been mentioned, I'm a research software engineer. Um, I was nominally drafted onto the project um, in June 2021 to do about six weeks of visualization help, and then I ended up working on it for two years um, as a kind of an illustration of the multidisciplinary nature of this project. So joint project between Newcastle and Loughborough University. It's quite a big team, as you can see there, quite a lot of academics and RAs and, and myself. Um, so what is Pyramid? So Pyramid is, um, is a demonstrated project for looking at uh, surface water flooding in a near real time uh, sense. So to try and take quite, quite new, recent, within an hour or so, um, rainfall readings and other climate readings and then predict um, surface water flooding. So I'm going to go through these slides quite quickly. There's, there's a lot of them. So if you spot anything in here and I don't elaborate on it, then come and grab me during the course of the day. Um, so to, yeah, there you are. It's a dynamic near real time flood risk uh, information system. Um, so it's, a, uh, it's designed to incorporate real time updates and climate uh, information, along with um, novel hidden data, so community source data, uh, to provide a more comprehensive view of um, the climate climate information to provide um, you know, as accurate as we can manage flood, surface water flooding information. And then, but also to find out what is possible with existing data and models. So this is quite kind of an unknown, unknown quantity at the beginning of the project. So we've got a demonstrated domain, which is in Newcastle, Pontine, unsurprisingly, which is where we are based. Um, and uh, then the wider Tyne catchment, so the Tyne runs all the way out to the west there. Um, in the northeast of England, that, uh, that goes into Northumberland, which is where the uh, water runoff happens. So the project has two water models. So one is a hydrodynamic flood model called High PIMS, which uh, Loughborough University maintain. This predicts flooding dynamics, so water depth and speed uh, from rainfall uh, to inundation. And it also includes a debris modeling component, which is a new component that was developed as part of Pyramid to allow um, primarily cars and other vehicles uh, that, to be swept along in the floods, which hasn't been uh, done before. On top of that, uh, there's another model called uh, SheTran, which is a hydrology model, which models a broader catchment area. So um, SheTran effectively provides boundary conditions for the IPIM simulator. So this, this simulates the entire water cycle and river flows. This is a much broader um, uh, resolution is about one kilometer, whereas high PIMS is about two meter resolution. So they, they operate in different ways. And um, she trans feeds into high PIMS. So uh, data, um, new, old, and hidden data, and we looked at, we have uh, real time sensor data feeding into the model. And there's a machine learning component which detects where vehicles might be so they can be fed into the high PIMS simulator. So that takes satellite data and uh, generates bound the boxes for vehicles. Uh, you won't be able to see any of that, but I've got this on. I've got some bits of paper which you can take away, not on for everybody in the room. Um, but this is the overall workflow. Uh, so it starts at the data sets, extracts data, does some quality control on the data. Uh, then we have um, all the simulators and the modeling, and then we have a visualization component at the end. So what, what, what have we actually produced? So we worked, uh, we worked with the Daphne platform at uh, the ST, STFC did kit. And I know Bethan's in the audience somewhere. Uh, so we built this entire thing uh, in Daphne. So it's been quite a collaborative exercise between us and Daphne. We, we actually couldn't have done it really without the availability of that platform. And that's a screenshot from the overall work show, which I can show um, on my laptop uh, at lunchtime. So uh, one of the things we found that um, collecting data live has a lot of problems. Um, uh, so we collect radar data, has spatial quality issues, uh, has time quality issues, so it has just missing readings. So these, this has come from the Environment Agency and the Met Office. Um, <clears throat> we also have a lot of point data, which also has quality issues uh, and API issues. Often it's not there. Uh, the API has gone down. And they're of varying quality and standard. Uh, we have local rain gauges as well. 
So one of the big things I think that we achieved was to uh, create a prioritization algorithm, which is take these different environmental data sources and combine them into a, um, a, a coherent and robust data source that can feed into the simulators. So I'm not going to dwell on this. We can, uh, anybody who's interested can come and uh, talk to me about it. Uh, the object detection works quite well, um, but it's, uh, it doesn't do real-time satellite streaming data, and um, the Daphne people had a fit when we suggested we might do that. So uh, th there is, although the algorithm works well, there is a big issue with using this kind of data in any kind of real um, situation at the minute. So this is one thing we've learned. Uh, we can do it, but the infrastructure isn't really there to actually do it um, meaningfully. But the models integrate well, so the, the, um, the two-tier model system does work very well. Uh, there's a result of a simulation in Newcastle. Newcastle has, has had some flooding recently. Um, and yeah, Daphne is a really powerful facility. It's, um, it, it allows the construction in a very modular form of uh, different models and data processing algorithms uh, that can be chained together, but also that can be publicly released so the, the wider Daphne community can use all the models that we've, we've created and the data sets we have. So uh, it's a bit, a bit of a kind of a general project outcomes, as, as is usual, if it's an academic project, it still feels like work in progress. Um, so the, the kind of main feelings I think we have about the project is that it, it's shown that if a, pro, if a simulator like this is the kind of digital twin that um, the um, like I said, the Environment Agency might, might be interested in. There are some big issues to do with data quality, uh, streaming data, <clears throat> just handling the data, uh, compute time. Um, so there are, uh, it's, it's proved the, um, the feasibility of an of a approach like this. But the next stage, and in true academic form, this opens up the possibility of further research. I uh, kind of have to say that. Uh, I think there are lots of, lots of data challenges, lots of uh, compute challenges associated with making something like this actually work um, uh, properly. Um, and uh, just a minute over time. Um, uh, two weeks ago, we had the final, the project's finished two weeks ago, and three weeks ago, we had the final uh, stakeholder workshop. And um, the Flood Forecasting Centre and National Farmers Union and the Environment Agency were uh, quite interested in this as a uh, general tool and kind of what, what they could learn from it and uh, where it could be taken further. The other industry um, bodies who thought it might be a bit too heavyweight for them and it might be too difficult to work with, but there's definitely, um, I think there's definitely interest in propelling the project forward, um, especially with using um, a more coherent data set to, to be able to feed into simulators. Um, and yes, one of the other issues is um, at the moment Daphne is a kind of a closed environment. You have to almost be an invited user. So if this was to become like a national resource of some description, I think there are, um, the, the Daphne platform would have to evolve and that would obviously open up issues of data sensitivity and accounts and, and all of that kind of thing. So that would be a challenge for, uh, for that STFC facility as well. Um, but that's... Uh, very, very short introduction to the pyramid, so uh, please come and talk to me sometime during the day. Thank you.